Don't crash on me. There we go. Welcome to the interview. I am Mixer Rules, and we got here Jeff. How are you doing today, Jeff? I'm doing great. How are you guys? I'm doing good. And I, we're also here with Librarian Larry. Hello. <laughs> um, I'm one of the, the, the wiki editors, so uh, I've been researching Funkies for a little bit now, so I'm so happy to be here for this interview. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it lives up to the hype. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm pretty sure no matter what happens, the wiki or the Discord is just gonna be like, "Oh my God, it's Jeff, the legend himself." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about legend; that might be overstating it a bit. But nah, we'll you're see. definitely a legend in the Discord. I can say that for sure. <laughs> well, it's been fun being there. It's been really nice, kind of getting exposed to it again uh, after having. Uh, really kind of put it behind me for so many years so so my first question is how, how does the discord make you feel to be honest because i know lots of people are pinging you every day and they're all saying you got that <laughs> emote of you now and all this <laughs> right. and all that, that, I like that uh no it's completely flattering um you know in some regards obviously i wasn't working in a silo and there were a lot of people involved in it but uh, it's it's a real testament to the work we put into it and that, um, you know, it's, some parts of it are very timeless, you know, and especially, you know, the storylines, which I'll tell you about, you know, it kind of was an evolution to the game. It wasn't part of the original kind of storyline or the original game itself. This wasn't story-based um, per se. And so, uh, so I'll get into that a little bit, but... Yeah, no, I think it's fantastic, and it's nice to see everybody kind of love the graphical representations, and then also to see what they do on their own and take it kind of and take it to another level or take it to their own interpretation of Funkies, too. So that's it's very rewarding as well. All right. So since you, uh, since the UB Funkies team actually disbanded due to Patel, um, how, how have you, like, been... How have I been? Yeah, like, so I know you now have a job in telecoms, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I run a website for a telecom company, and uh, so it's much different. You know, my career has been kind of obviously in marketing, but it's also been very across genres. I worked for an online auction house for a while. I worked for, um, you know, I started off working for Fossil Watches for 13 years before I joined Radica. And um, and then I've also worked for uh, a company that owned motorcycle dealerships across the country so, <laughs> running their marketing department. So very, very wide and across the board, you know, a lot of different things I've worked on. Um, but it's all marketing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so have you personally seen any of the mods that have come out for Funkies so far? You know, I haven't yet. That's so something I want to do and I need to see. <laughs> because I keep getting asked about that on here and I'm like, oh yeah, I got to take some time just to kind of... Uh, My you know, personal favorite mod is the one that changes every funky into con. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Every NPC into con. is con. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Con's the man. <laughs> nice. So, nice. um... Is there anything that you would like to tell the viewers about yourself before we actually get into the rest of the questions? Uh, about myself, uh, I don't know. I'm married. I have two dogs. I live in a small town in, uh, just outside of Dallas, and uh, I've been here for a long time now, I guess. And uh, I'm originally from Michigan. Um, I grew up there and uh, went to school there and moved down here to, partly to get away from the cold, but also just to, uh, you know, kind of uh, get away from just a smaller town to a bigger town, bigger city. Understandable. Okay, so Larry, would you like to start off with the first few questions? Sure. So um, originally, how did the idea for UB Funkies come about? Well, actually, the, the story for UB Funkies or the game, the idea for it, uh, came before I even joined the company. I uh, was working at Fossil with a developer there on a project, 
and was kind of growing restless and wanting to kind of maybe leave. And he said that he knew of a company that I might be a good fit for. And I interviewed with him and it turned out it was a really good fit. And so I joined uh, Radica and I guess that would have been 2005, I guess. And when I did, it was like, oh, great. I can't wait. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, we're working on this game. It might be kind of a, a cool, edgy kind of thing. Back then, MMOGs are really popular. Um, so uh, originally, it was, and I'm not sure if I shared any of these images, but I think I might have. It was originally like a USB stick, and you would plug it into a game, and it would open a world and with different games. Ooh, I don't think you've said anything about that before. Yeah. So, so just to close, well, I like an MMO. <laughs> <laughs> so when this first came around, it was the idea was that it would um, that you would walk around this world and play different games within them, and you, different USB keys would put you in different worlds with different games. That was originally the idea. Each a separate kind of entity. So is but, that um, since? There were two USBs that you guys released. Were those what they were going to look like originally, where it was the head that popped off? and then? You... No. No, this is before the whole even, the design of the Funky was even around yet. Oh, wow. This, it was just a slim, on the initial sketches, it was just a slim stick, USB stick. So no personality to them at all? <laughs> No, not very much. Not very much at all. No, it was strictly meant for games. And that's kind of what we were. And what we ended up seeing was that, because um, we did do a lot of research on these guys and testing in front of the kids, is that we found out that they liked, they were more interested in the character on screen than they were really about the games. And it was like, oh, interesting. So maybe we ought to kind of write a biography for each of these guys. And so we did, and that's kind of what we started doing. And we wrote these biographies, and then we tested it with them as well. And um, the game was really doing well, but there was one thing missing, and we couldn't really put our finger on it. And finally, we tested a group, and the, the group came back to us and said, why are we doing all these things? Why are we running around this world? And why are they there? And why are what is this? Like it had all these why questions, like why, 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 why? And we we're like, yeah, we didn't really even think about that. And so we just completely re rethought the entire game and said, let's give these guys a purpose. Let's put them there for a reason. Let's give them a backstory and we'll kind of have this, you know, character that'll guide them along. And that was Mayor Say So. And uh, and he kind of guides along the funkies and such, but we needed an antagonist, and that's when we kind of came up with the idea for Master Locks, and that's and the, you know, just that whole idea and aspect had never really come to us before. And when we did that and tested it again, it was just a home run. I mean, on every level, everybody was coming back saying how amazing it was, and I was going to do insane numbers. And um, how did the idea for the figures come about? Like, how did it change from like USB sticks to having figures that you would plug into the hub? Yeah, so those were more kind of based on a, uh, I mean, it was based on urban vinyl. So we'd studied a lot of different urban vinyl, and that was a trend, too, with Monkey and stuff like that, you know, and you put these things on your desk and collect them, but they didn't really do anything. So our idea was to have these things actually have a purpose and that you would collect them, and the more you collect them, the more games you can play. So it was a bit of a razor blade, razor kind of, you know, program for the stores whereas you bought the hub and then you bought the games and that incentivized you to come to buying into it yep. and um that brings us me to my next question about since ub funkies was the first ever twist to life game ever made how does it make you feel to have actually created a genre like not, not like not only a game like an entire genre that's still around to this day well i mean when you're in the middle of it you don't really you don't really understand the impact that you're having or what you're really doing per se, but, um, but no, looking back on it now, I think it was a huge hit. Obviously it's not a genre that's really kind of around that as much anymore, at least to my knowledge, but, um, 
I mean, I think that it was, it had its moment where it was a really good thing. And unfortunately, and we'll talk about this a little bit, unfortunately, it didn't have to end. It really didn't. Um, and it was just all kind of a political thing with Mattel and stuff. So. Uh, so um, I just quickly want to touch on the fact that you said that you joined in around 2003. Do you know how long back Funkies was actually in planning? Uh, I joined in 2005. Oh, five. So that would have been, I think it had been around maybe six months before that, three months maybe. They had worked out some of the electronics. They'd had some uh, some of the initial development. This is before Arcade, maybe, I think, was not even on board. Yeah, or maybe they'd just come on board, but yeah. So, um, when UB Funky was, or UB Funkies was first launched, what were your long terms for the project? Well, I think our long term was <laughs> for a short little fall run of a cool product that people liked and see where it goes from there. But nobody could have, I mean, certainly I didn't expect it to be the, the big hit that it was. I mean, when we started, I think the first year, and if this would have been after by Funky Key Island, it was a $30 million brand. And we were in all the toys, the four major toy stores, Target, Toys R Us, Kmart, and Walmart. And we were out licensing it. We had gotten our placement into a Speed Racer movie. That came about as Mattel, obviously. But, I mean, initially, when we first had that very first set out, it was just after Mattel had bought us because we had already planned everything out more or less and they just helped get us placement in the store a little better. But it was mainly our our group that was really trying to get out there and sell it and hustle, and especially from our side, the development side. And um, was Mattel in charge of like manufacturing the figures or was that also Radica? Like they just like gave you the money and... Or were they like helping you create the figures as well, like in the design process? No, they weren't helping us with the design process. Um, they ended up towards the end helping us with packaging a little bit and not design wise, but just production wise. Um, and I don't think they ever helped us with production on the funkies or the, or the hubs themselves. I think that was all us in our factories. And um, for what was the process for creating a new world in Newbie Funkies? Were the characters designed first, or were the worlds made first? Good question. Uh, you know, actually, uh, we always had kind of some extra characters floating around at any given time. Things that didn't make the cut, things that we thought were going to be in, but for one reason or another didn't make it into that world. Um, didn't really fit the whole thing. It was almost like picking songs on an album, you know? It's like if you have a theme of an album, you know, some things just don't fit as good as other ones. And so sometimes we had to make those hard calls, and sometimes those things would then lead us to the next world where we might build around that and kind of build off of where we uh, had originally kind of been coming from. So it wasn't as hard and fast as, you know, it always started with the characters and then we went to the worlds or the worlds. I... But generally speaking, it was the worlds that kind of ran it, you know. We would come up with the worlds and try to find characters that kind of made sense within there. So how far in advance did you guys actually plan out the funky storyline? I know you were talking, uh, you and me had a discussion in DMs about the orange portal that Master Locks went through. Or I guess... Robot Tinker? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny, you know, when you're always balancing things. So, you know, when you're playing out a toy line. So like this, for instance, when we were doing the initial line, we were aiming for like a ship date around August, September, you know, in time for the holidays. And so by July, we were kind of nailing things down from a production standpoint in a design but before that you're 
you're doing commercials and you're planning out animations and you're having to do some of that stuff before the design of the actual characters is even final. And you're just hoping that you nail it right on. Um, some of it you can change in post-production, but some of it you just kind of have to go, eh, you know, it just wasn't exactly, but hopefully nobody notices. And obviously because it was such a, um, a beloved toy that uh, clearly with you guys, you're seeing things that are <laughs> that the <laughs> average person may not pick up on, but that you guys are under a microscope looking at, and that's cool. I remember in the 2007 UB Funky uh, release trailer, like the main trailer with where we see Deuce going, if you be funky, when we uh, in that trailer, I believe, I think it's that one, there was someone, uh, I believe it was Sir Lacko, someone in the Discord. Uh, they had zoomed in on the like middle piece of the land where you would walk across the bridge to get to the other section of there was a um so normally there's a statue in the middle there, but uh it was behind where Gabby's house is and they they're just like, "What is this? Who did this <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's some things like that where we're at afterwards we were kind of like, wait, what did they do? <laughs> <laughs> like the animation group that we were working with to do some of those things, you know, you had to balance whether it was accurate versus whether it just looked really good. And so sometimes we made that had to make that call where it was like, well, this looks really good. I, I know it's not completely accurate as what it is, but it gets the point across. <laughs> nice though. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny though because Sometimes you work on these things and you think, gosh, you know, it... <laughs> when we were getting back, for instance, some of the initial hype that I started getting out there was, you know, YouTube was still kind of young relatively. And so I ended up taking a lot of these early animation clips before they'd even been cut into a, into a commercial and started putting them out on YouTube and floating them out there. And the weird thing was, is that it really started taking off virally that way. And I think I put out maybe three or four of the animated clips. And before I knew it, like kids were putting up their own videos and stuff. Uh, by the time the Funkies had hit the stores, they were putting filming their own characters, putting the Funkies in like almost treating them like action figures and putting those videos and uploading them. And then they were putting them in the game and showing, like, doing screen captures of how far they got ahead of them. And I mean, they came up with their own storylines, and it just kind of grew from that. It just where people took it and ran with it, just like you guys are. This is pretty embarrassing, but I remember doing some of those videos. <laughs> I, I had, I had a, so my grandpa used to be really into woodworking, and he made me, like, this hotel house thing. And I used to do this series, like, a funky hotel or something like that. And it, I'm pretty sure it's still on YouTube. So now everyone's going to go and witch hunt it from the Discord. So I just, like, exposed myself. It's up there. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's still up. And, oh, God. Yeah. I have yeah. a confession to make. I was one of those kids, too. So. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you guys weren't alone. You were part of the longest group of people doing it. You were crazy. Yeah, that was really exciting. I think that was the first time we actually realized that we may be on to something. It was when I started putting up these clips before the product had even shipped and people were just like devouring up and asking all the questions and just going crazy over them. And it was like, oh, whoa, what did we step into here? <laughs> uh, speaking, yeah. speaking of those clips, um, Larry, who is the one who found the um, old... I, I believe it was Hidden Realm commercial. Uh, Dream State. Dream, Dream State. State, yeah. But, um, he had originally found a clip. And did you ever upload those? Like from the later um, animations? Yeah, I uploaded a lot of those things early on. We just, I just like to leak them out there and just kind of get people kind of excited about them and, I you know, to see people. Like, if they would like them and if, honestly, it was a good gut check, too, for us to... If kids liked them and they thought it was cool, then ah, okay, well, let's go keep going down that road. If it, they didn't, if they thought it was dumb or they said something, eh, it might change direction a little bit. So does this mean that Larry found your hidden YouTube channel? <laughs> yeah, <you got> so. 
Maybe so. Maybe. <laughs> what, what, do you know where you got it from? Um, I forgot. It was like a two-second clip of Marshall saying, like, if, if you be funky. No, I know that, but do you know where you got it? Where you found it? It was, like, part of, like, a compilation of, like, a bunch of clips from, like, 2007 YouTube. I just stumbled upon it. So, mm -hmm. like, 2008 YouTube. I, 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 yeah, it was a little weird, but... <laughs> Could have been something I did, yeah. <laughs> Okay. I know at one point we had a lot of those spliced together, and we did have a clip of this, like a super clip of it, of all oh, the it, different cutscenes and everything. Well, it was like a clip. It was like a, a compilation of a bunch of like Radica stuff too that I found it in. Oh yeah. I, oh, I, other I things. Like a, I, like, I found like a different clip in that one. So. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I'll have to check it out sometime. So, uh, I know we were talking about it, but how does the story, like the um. Lock slash evil tinker slash good tinker storyline actually end. Did you guys have that planned out? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I think I told you as well, but I mean, and we kind of always saw it kind of going down where Tinker kind of gets away and he ends up in his own little world. And so it's a world with just him, you know, and uh, kind of running things, I guess, there. And what happens when we start introducing Funkies into this world that's not a Funkies world where he comes into it, but we flip it. And it's a, it's a ma Master Locks world with Tinker and all these robots all around and the Funkies kind of finding out about this. And what happens then? What do they, you know, is this some place that they are trying to, you know, capture, you know, Tinker? Are they going there to f do kind of espionage in some way and find some kind of hidden uh, things that are there that they didn't know about that kind of tell their story? Um, just some more insight into kind of how they came to be, and maybe that was explored a little bit, but, you know, we never did. We never got it past maybe the storyboard stage. You happen to have any of those storyboards? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't think so, but I'll look around. <laughs> that, that does sound like an awesome idea, though. I would have loved that. I know that. Yeah. Maybe that's where the master turn off switch is for all of the henchmen. And then once you got there, all the henchmen just turned off fully. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Or the big button, you know? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> don't talk to us like this, Jeff! What does it mean? <laughs> I can't believe that you guys haven't figured this out yet. <laughs> We've looked through every it's section like all the, of the code. All, we can't find it. All the clues are right in front of you for this thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was rare when people would come up to me and tell me that what the button was for. I was like, oh, finally somebody figured it out. <laughs> it like, we knew this would come, a, come around at some point. And they're like, I'm not telling anybody. I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> this is we need to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know i mean just some people are able to get it right away and some people just aren't i mean it's it's very obvious when you press the button the effect that happens can you give us a hint because either we're all slow or our vms don't work like they're supposed to i think that was the hint i think that's <laughs> it so it gives you an effect okay you got it, Funky Discord. You got to figure out what this effect is, because I'm blind. Oh, I mean, clearly something happens. It wouldn't be a button there if it didn't have to do something. Oh, no, because doesn't it say at the top of the screen every time you click it, it's a pointless button? It does. It does, and maybe that's the clue. Uh, <laughs> that's so confusing. Pointless button. So what's what's a pointless button? Hmm. Think about that for a little bit. <laughs> Jeff, you're going to be thinking this isn't okay. <laughs> Noodle on that. You'll get it. Uh, in, the mean, in the meantime... I know the whole community oh, here is very confident that you will break this code. <laughs> oh, God. All oh, the pressure's on me now. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Well, while Mixer thinks over the, the big button, let's move on to the next question in the meantime. <laughs> uh, were there ever any plans to release uh, UB Funkies on other platforms like video game consoles or maybe smartphones or tablets as like in the, the, the later days of the brand? We did talk about uh, not smartphone phones, but when 
we did talk about doing some kind of a phone uh, app. Uh, it wasn't like a smartphone because smartphones weren't really that far along when we were in there. But um, it was more just kind of like how could we integrate somebody that had a phone into the game. So you would do something on your phone that would translate into the game and then you could, um, yeah, things like that is what we're talking about. And was that going to tie into the chat funkies at all? Because I know, like, you you guys added in cell phones, like, in-game during that? Uh, no, that wasn't. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Mixer, do you want to? Yeah. yeah. What was the first funky ever made? Like, either, like, on the production line, or which one was the first one that you guys actually thought of with all the person? Boy, or whatever. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'd have to go back and look, but I would guess it would either have been Lotus or Bones. Very solid choices, either one of them. Both I'm have amazing. Pretty sure it was, I'm pretty sure it was Lotus. Lotus you... was, um, wasn't he in like 90% of the hub packs? Pretty sure he was like uh, the yeah. most common one. Yeah, yeah, he was. Um, I mean, we did so many different hub packs, so we did them as exclusives. We did the Speed Racer hub packs too and stuff, but yeah, he was definitely a popular character. I mean, across the board, overseas, I mean, just well, really I expect exciting. a cute little panda, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay. So this next question is going to make you think. You ready for this? Sure. <laughs> is UB a boy or a girl? Um, you know, it's funny. I always kind of thought UB was neither. Just kind of a asexual. You know, kind of wasn't a boy, wasn't a girl. Just reflected everybody, boys and girls. He's just UB. He's just UB. He's, new, and, he's neutral. <laughs> and... Do He's funkies have do funkies have genders or is it just like everybody's? Yeah, they, 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 they do. yeah sure. What um, gender is Tep then? Because it's I a mean, mummy. It's, you always see it's his eye. I mean, I think some of them are easier to, to notice than others. Obviously, Sprout is much more of a a girl. Twinks, you know, is a girl. Trixie. Um, yeah, <laughs> Twinks, and you know, and. You know, you go to Funky Key Island, and you know, I think some like some of those flurry. I think flurry is much more of a soul, also more of a. You I know, always blood. figured soul was a girl, to be honest. I don't know why. Really? Webley, I always thought was a girl. Really? Yeah. I mean, I thought that for like the common variant, but then like. I thought with either with like the very rare, it was like that was the dude one of that line. You know what I mean? <laughs> the dude one. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So in Daydream Oasis, there is a staircase near which game is that, Larry? Um, I haven't been Daydream in a while. I'm sorry, I, I forgot. <laughs> uh well, it's. So it's up in the upper left corner of the map, I'm pretty sure. There's like this staircase that looks like it's ascending up to heaven. It goes off screen or whatever. Um, there's a like giant bear creature, and it's like it's called Lox's Goon, I believe, or Goon in the um, files. What? Hmm. How do you beat that? Or what was it? It was just a, uh, something we were going to lead into. We were going to develop off of that, and it was going to lead someplace else. Um, we just never were able to get it done. It was one of those things that we wanted to put out as like almost like a service pack, where it just kind of like, or expansion pack, where you could go up to that thing. You had to defeat the bear, and then you would get past the bear, and you would go up the steps, and it would lead into something, uh, something fun, a little small, small little world, like a funky key island or something. Kind of like Angus's manor, the elevator. Yeah, yeah, very similar, actually. Yeah, nice. <laughs> so, um, one second, let us just look at our notes really fast. Yeah. 
you want to do the next one, Larry? Sure, but uh, before that, I just want to throw in one that I just thought of right now. Uh, out of all the worlds in UB Funkies, which one is your favorite? <laughs> Uh, it's like saying what's your favorite kid you know, I don't know. <laughs> you know well, um I, I mean i really liked uh i really liked hidden hidden realm i thought was really good um that was fun i i really liked funky key island um that was probably my first real favorite one because it was the first one we were able to do it after we had had some success with the first series. Um, and, you know, Nightmare Rift was kind of fun too. That whole, um, that whole area over there with in Dream State. So, like, I know personally, my favorite stage room Oasis. I just love like all the colors and like how like vibrant it is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, dire and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Whoa, bro. <laughs> Whoa, man. Oh, no. <laughs> Playing funkies when you're older is pretty fun too. You you get the latch on to some of the references. <laughs> yep. Um. So, if the game had gotten to the point where you ran out of broken portals to repair, how would the funkies get to new worlds? Would it be like how they did? Uh... A uh, boat that takes you to Hidden Realm? That's a good question. If the game would have gotten to the point where you ran out of broken portals to repair, I don't think we ever would have let it get to that point. There always would have been one portal that wasn't that was repaired. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, I think it would just take you, you would have like some kind of a, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. I haven't really thought about that before. I ran out of broken portals. Hmm. I guess we would have had to have created a new portal or a reason to create a new portal. And uh, the final question in this uh, in this section of the interview, which is one that I know everybody's going to want to know about. In version 1.0, there was a raccoon funky named Bandit who was later removed from the game. Was this funky planned to be released? And if so, like which set was he supposed to be a part of? Hell yeah, he was supposed to be released. <laughs> yeah, well, he was uh, he was all set and queued up, um, but he got cut. Yeah, um, trying to remember what where he was originally going to be. Part. Is he going to be like Dot? How Dot appeared in one point oh, and then later had a place inside a funky. No, he was. Sorry, I'm just kind of looking back at some of my notes I had here. He was like series four. Mm -hmm. People in the Discord are freaking out right now because Jeff is online. How <laughs> <laughs> do they know? <laughs> are they watching this? No, uh, they're they're looking at the Discord and they just see that you're solid green online. So, oh, I see. <laughs> Got it. <Yeah. laughs> um, yeah, I don't really see any notes on this per se, but you know, thinking back on it, I think he was part of Hidden Realm. Hidden Realm? And I think that we ended up swapping them out. We were originally going to have four. Uh, no, we were, I think we swapped them out for Raj. Ooh. Oh, that actually this ride sense. was actually kind of a late addition, and we went with him instead of um, Bandit. Understandable. Uh, okay, I just thought of a question since we were talking about um, Hidden Realm. What do you think would happen if uh, Funky Fighters become became like its own little esport? No, I I thought I always thought it could have a good little fighting, like a little funky, funky forum where people could go there and they could fight and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> if, I think that'd be cool. If we can ever get online mode um, working, would you like to be part of the first tournament? Oh, for sure, for sure. Sign me up. <laughs> I I could be the person who has to play against me, but yeah, sure. <laughs> No, as long as I get to pick my character, you know, each one's got to have a different move, right? I guess. 
Oh, was there um were there any plans to expand the funkies that were allowed to fight in the dojo? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, at some point we we're gonna let them all be in there. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> I really want to see what mulches would be. I think wouldn't wouldn't it have something to do with the backpack? Like uh, he has a special where he just blows the enemy away. I love that idea. Yeah, <laughs> wow, that'd be good. Yeah. Make sure to take notes for 3D Funkies. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, Sam. I got this. <laughs> or Boggle, you know, each thing comes out of his three eyes. You know, something comes out of each of his Lazy eyes. Beam. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why not? All right, so the next section of the interview is going to be about the Speed Racer world because there was some, unfortunately, there's some, some content in that world and, like, a few mysteries as well that we want to ask about. Yeah. But... Before we get to that, we want to ask, like, how did the idea for a Speed Racer tie-in come about, like, originally? Mattel got the license for a Speed Racer for the movie that was coming out, and there was going to be a big launch. And so typically what happens once they get a license like that is they rally every game group, and they say, hey, what are you going to do to support this movie? And so each group kind of comes up with its own thing. So you might have board games come up with a Speed Racer version. Uh, you may have you know action figures will come up with a version uh, hot wheels will come out with like a speed racer cars and stuff like that and then for us it was you know we can do a funky's version of speed racer and and that's kind of how it came about and did warner brothers have any say in what the speed racer world was like or did or was it mainly the the funky's team that designed everything no no they definitely had a say <laughs> <laughs> for sure yeah, there were some things, I mean, it wasn't as bad as DC, but there were some things that you just had to be on point with, you know, and stuff. Especially with regards to the way the new movie was coming out, so it had to reflect the movie, as I recall. It uh, couldn't be, like, classic references too much. It had to be more of the modern kind of, you know, we previewed the movie beforehand, so. Would that be why the, um, like, the old cartoony version of speed wasn't released yep okay it's not like today like nowadays like when you play a game you might get a skin for like an you know a classic version of the character and stuff like that back then it wasn't like that they were just solely focused on whatever they were promoting and they didn't see the yeah you know, i think that nowadays like pulling those classic characters back in as well is really cool i like that idea so I have one more question really fast, and then I'll let Larry get back to the uh, normal list. But um, did you ever get any of the postcards from Fun Kiki or the Speed Racer Zone sent to your email from other uh, members on the Funky team? For sure. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. I love that idea. <laughs> Why, did you not think I did? I, I, just, I just didn't know. I mean, you, you were one of the testers, you said, correct? I was. <laughs> yeah, so you, you're in game so much, you probably see him. So I'm just wondering, you know, in, in team joke, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> um. So this is something I've actually been curious about, curious about for a while. Um, was there ever going to be like a plot in the Speed Racer world, or was it always just going to be mini games? It was just planned to be games. Um, we had considered doing a plot, but it was just the more we dug into it, it would have been a much bigger undertaking than we wanted to really, frankly, give Speed Racer. <laughs> we wanted to save those kind of big launches for Funkies, for our regular line of Funkies. So this was just something to support the movie, a little one-off kind of thing. If the movie was successful, great. We'd have upside. If it wasn't, then no harm, no foul. And obviously the movie was not successful. <laughs> you know, going into it, though, there was big hopes because the directors were the guys that did The Matrix and stuff. So it was, you know, the Wachowski brothers. So we thought that, gosh, this could be a really big hit. But it was. For me, it looked pretty damn successful because you got me to buy every single funky in the, in the Speed Racer zone, you know? Well, it may have been successful for us, but the movie wasn't successful. <laughs> Understandable. Yeah. And a little uh, off topic, but was there a planned story for the DC world also then? Like later on, or were you just going to make that the same kind of deal as Speed Racer? 
the same kind of deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We didn't really, we wanted to keep the storyline funky base and we felt by mixing those worlds up, it really was going to cause more problems than, you know, the, there wasn't as much upside. You know, the other thing too, is that, you know, you have these licenses for a, a finite amount of time. So when the license is up now, all of a sudden we've got to re-engineer it, to pull all that stuff back out of there. It's because we don't have a license to do it anymore. And just, I don't know, it just seemed like a really big hassle. Whereas the way we built it, we could just turn it off and be done. Um, also, why was the second half of the Speed Racer like Funkies canceled? Like, yeah, it kind of stunk. Well, <laughs> it's because the movie bombed. Uh. <laughs> movie wasn't good. No need to do more toys. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, it kind of bummed us out a little bit because we had pretty good. I mean, did you see the characters that were planned for it? Or, um, well. I know I, I played Speed Racer's minigame and I have access to Tejo, like due, due to like the portal jammers. But um, as for figures, I've seen common Tejo, and I think that like that, that's about it. Yeah, yeah. There was a. Uh, I think we had I'm trying to remember what ones we had, but it was like we had Chim Chim, we had a special Speed Racer one, we had Teo, and then another kind of Speed Racer looking guy. We did some different colored ones like that, but yeah, it was a shame. Especially Chim Chim. I wanted to see one of those Chim Chim ones. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe wasn't there an alternate uh version of Chim Chim? I think I saw something about it. I know there was an alternate for um Cannonball Taylor and Racer X that looked more like the older uh cartoon style. Was there? Yeah. There was an image floating around. I don't know if it's legit. Uh, it's somewhere. I'll try and find it after the interview. And I think I might have it. Yeah. Well, we had not sure if it's legit or not, though. <laughs> so. Well, we had Chim Chim, you know, as different, like, uh, sure. but it wasn't the classic one, you know. And I think any classic versions of it were probably just based on our concept art that we were talking in, in the early days doing. And we'll I don't think that we, uh, I know we didn't ever go to, go to a production on any kind of classic Chim Chim or classic, uh, Racer X even. Like the, the version of Racer X that I remember seeing, uh, like it basically had a full mask over it. It had the giant X, but it like had a giant visor covering its entire like eyes and it had the uh, rest of it pulled up over its mouth. So, yeah, that was, my guess without seeing it to be sure it would be that it's probably it was early artwork the artwork that we pitched the you know we pitched people on before we'd even done the actual development of the game uh, okay but, because we had nothing to base it on before we knew what the movie was going to look like and so we were just kind of spitballing basically so during the launch of speed racer like and of the speed racer zone did you guys um, get sat in a room and get to see the mo movie early then? Yeah, yeah, it was fun. We went out to the lot and uh, went out to, uh, was it DreamWorks, I think? And we uh, got to see the entire movie there. And I think the director was there. And I don't think any of the stars were there. But yeah, packed house. We saw the whole movie and we even found our, we knew where the spot was, where Funky was going to be in the background. And so we saw that happen. Where can you like give us a little hint on where it is? Because I don't want to have to re-download and watch the entire movie again and again. I've got a screenshot of it someplace. I'll get it and send it to you. But um, I was looking for it a little bit before the call here today, but I couldn't find it off the top of my head. But basically, it occurs when it's during a race. And there's a dialogue between Matthew Fox and somebody else in like a suite. Oh, and I you, know where that is. And you look out past that, and in the background, there's a giant funky as a blimp kind of floating around going by. <laughs> it's quick. If you don't catch it, it's really quick, unfortunately, but hey, it's kind of cool. I think, I think I now remember seeing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Check it out. I'll look for the screenshot. 
That's, that's during uh, the race where they go in the desert and stuff, correct? That's the one where they gotta help Tejo. No, I think it's... That's uh, you, can be, you can be right. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but I know that the scene is inside of a dome. It's like a big, humongous dome everywhere, and there's all these kind of everything going on, and they're in one of the suites in this dome. Uh, speaking of Tejo, uh, back in 2009, a Tejo Funky somehow ended up on eBay. Do you know how the, the story behind this and how that ended up happening? And was it no. real? Was it real? I, I don't know. I hadn't seen that. That's interesting. I, I know that it didn't work because <laughs> <laughs> obviously we never put it in the game, but um, oh, no, we definitely... We, huh? It's in the game. The sprite works. You can access it. Through. Correct. But we never released the characters. So they may have gotten it because uh, we had tons of prototypes of those floating around. So I'm sure somebody took one and sold it on eBay or something. I remember someone in the Discord, I think it was uh, Ressing. Um, he, had, he was um, an owner of a dot. So we get, tried getting him in the server and we successfully did. But he said something about him knowing someone in like Indiana, I believe, or something. But one of his friends there knew someone who owned the Tejo Funky. So hmm. could that have been one of the like pre production ones? Yeah, for sure. It probably was. It's very well possible. I don't know how he got Indiana, but <laughs> it's possible it could have traveled from here to up there. I know one of the guys that was not on the Funky's team, but worked for Radica. Uh, went on to work up there in Indiana. So, I mean, who knows? Oh, maybe, maybe, that's it. maybe so. And um, I'm just going to jump ahead. This question was meant for a later part of the interview, but while we're on the topic, do you know what happened to the other prototype fungies that were shown? The other what? The no, other uh, prototypes. Do you know who would have them nowadays? Or... <laughs> well, I used to have them all, but uh, yeah, I didn't end up keeping them. Oh. Um, yeah, you know when the well, I'll tell you about this later, but a little sneak peek. But when the product line got uh, canceled, um, yeah, it just really kind of, you know, really bummed us out and really bummed me out and made me, quite frankly, pretty angry because there was never really a good reason why. And uh, and you know they flushed a, you know, a product line that most people would consider a massive hit. I mean, just look at look at the subreddit. We now have 325 people who are following it as of today. I just checked it. This and we have almost 200 in the Discord already. Jeez, that's crazy. Like, people yeah. still remember this, like, yeah. very well. Clearly, it resonates with people. So, I mean, I, yeah. I, I know it's a bit anecdotal, but I have all my funkies on my, like, shelf in my room, and... Pretty much whenever I have friends over, they almost always remember either the commercials or playing the game. So, like, people still know of the brand. Like, yeah, that's people cool. People are still playing it today. I mean, uh, we recently, a uh, new member of the Discord, I helped, uh, I helped them pick out a set to get. They got a few rares. and But um, now, I believe, they've started playing Funky Zone on a VM. So... Pretty cool. That is really cool. They only played it like once before this. And they joined the mm -hmm. Discord and they're like, hey, I really remember this. How they're playing. What I no, remember. Nice. And um, yeah, jumping back to Speed Racer, when we were looking inside the files, we found two unused cutscenes about Royalton and Cruncher Block visiting Funky's Town. Um, does this mean that a Speed Racer adventure pack was planned at some point? And was any content made for it? It's funny that they were in there. Wow, really? Hmm. Yeah, they were, they haven't been taken out even in 5.0. I believe we still have them in the 8.0 also. Or 4.0, 4 not 8.0. <laughs> not 4.0, yeah. 4.8. Jesus, I can't talk today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, originally we had kind of thought of that, like I said, that we would kind of integrate them a little bit more, but I think once we got into it, we were just like, 
I don't know if this makes sense. So. And no, there wasn't any content made for it. Just the cutscene that we had thought we might use and kind of build off of, but we didn't. Okay. So, um, one more question about um, the actual Speed Racer Zone that I uh, just thought of. Why is the, like, goon for that uh, realm or whatever, uh, for the world, um, why is it have no sprite? That's supposed to be, like, crunch your block or someone, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it just... Uh... Again, we wanted to take. I think we just wanted the. Yeah, I mean, I think that we originally just wanted the it to not resemble Funkies as much. Um, why he doesn't have a sprite's kind of weird, though. I'm not really. I can't remember why that would be, but. Um, maybe, I don't maybe since hmm? the actual Funky wasn't gonna be released, you guys were just. Like... Yeah, I mean, yeah, that could be. We just. Yeah, I just remember the whole time thinking big ideas, and we had all these cool ideas, and they're just being kind of pulled back in. And I'm just like, okay, let's do this, and we can do this, see, and we'll show them something, and then it'll be like, okay, pull it back in. And so we just kind of eventually got to the point where it was like, okay, well, let's just stop going down this road. It's just going to be games. So. And, uh, and cool characters. Most of those games. Uh, were directly from Arcadium site, correct? The three skins? Yeah, right? exactly. Okay. Exactly. They had already developed all these games, and every time they would, we would go into a development meeting up there with them, they would uh, you know, show us new games they were working on and things that could be turned into funky games um, because the games that they were doing were never really done in a mass way, I guess. And so we were kind of taking those to the masses for them. <laughs> so um, this next section of the interview is going to be about the UB Funkies TV show. So for all of you who are Should watching don't, don't know about this, <laughs> UB Funkies was supposed to have an animated television series. That's about all we know about it. So Jeff, well, can you give us like a little more, know more insight? More thing. It got replaced by Monster High. Why? <laughs> <laughs> so here's what happened um this is you gotta remember this is at the height of funkies when it was really popular mattel set up uh two meetings one with uh cartoon network and one with nickelodeon and so we flew up to new york and met with both of them and pitched them um but it wasn't just a pitch it was two groups it was us and it was Monster High, each pitching the networks on a cartoon series and trying to see which one they had more interest in, right? And so we worked really long and hard on, on the screenshots and developing something of a, a kind of a common idea with... Uh, with the different, you know, characters within that, more of a story-based kind of thing. Um, and we had uh, everything. We had it all set up, and we went up there. We pitched to them. I remember it was a foggy day, and it was like on the, I don't know, 60th floor or something. It was way up there in the clouds, you know, and uh, this high skyscraper. And, and we did everything right. It just was a slam dunk, and we got news that it, shortly after that, we got news that that it was kind of more of a less uh, done deal that they were already going to be probably getting Monster High and that really we were just there to kind of show them what we could be doing with this property. It was like, well, why is that? And it was because UB Funkies was a Radica idea and Monster High was a new platform that they saw launching into toys and all this other stuff. And they came up with it, so that's what they end up pushing. Mm. And so they put the they pushed behind that. I think Nickelodeon was the one that picked them up, and there it was. Would it had it been possible for you, uh, like Radica and Arcade, to go to him directly instead of going through? No, when Mattel bought Radica, we became a um, 
a division of Mattel. So anything, sorry, my dogs are barking if you can hear them. <laughs> Smush Wyatt. Uh, so at that point, they owned all rights to everything, Radica. And so we, it was theirs to do with what we will, what they could. Arcadium had no, we just licensed the games from them. They had no interest in the brand and it, no uh, vested interest in the brand. Um, what was the show like supposed to be about? Like, was there a storyline developed for it or was it uh, just like a basic idea you guys had at the time? I think we pitched them two ideas for possible episodes and I'd have to go back and check my notes to see what, if I have that information still. Um, but I shared with you some of the artwork on there and basically we had those on cards and we would, this guy that worked with us on the stuff, he kind of told the story and would show these different cards at different moments in the story that he was narrating. And so just to kind of give you an idea of how that episode would have progressed and kind of where it would have, how it would have kind of played out on screen. That makes sense. And um, how do you think the show would have affected the UB Fungi's game if it had been greenlit? I think we would have taken it to another level, honestly. I think that it would have gone, we would have probably been started developing our own games for it. I think that we would have, um, obviously the licensing opportunity would have been even bigger than it was. Uh, T-shirts, you know, selling out and stuff like that. I think we would have been doing multiple licenses, multiple instances. I mean, just I really could have seen it really going a lot of new places. Um, so, but yeah. Um. So the next section of the interview is going to be about unused content for Funkies. Uh, uh Mixer, do you want to ask like a, a few of the questions from here first? Yeah. So, um, based off of the prototypes that were shown at the one Funkies convention, I, uh, at the one convention, I think it was CES, I think that's what it was, or, no, wait, it, Comic-Con, it was Comic-Con. Oh, Comic-Con, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I kept getting them confused the last interview with, um, with Brian, the voice actor for Jerry. I kept getting them confused, and I was like, ah... <laughs> but uh so based off the prototypes that we saw there like of white marshall and um i think there was a goalie a dally and a normal marshall figure whatever happened to them uh which ones do you see the there was a what golden dally there, no there, there was... was a dally there was a i believe it's uh I, I can never remember how to pronounce his names, but it's the flower, the, like, flower enemy, and then the, um, blue flying, like, dog thing, and then there was a martial <laughs> figure. I, I can never remember the names. I don't play those worlds enough. Goya? Yeah. Yeah, and Marshall, Goya. Dolly was the flower. Dolly Marshall. <laughs> and there was a white Marshall. There was the, what was the other one? King Sid. King Sid was from Hidden uh, Realm. Hidden Realm, yeah. But whatever, how would uh, how would his model had it fit onto you? Who, who King Sid? Yeah, because he yeah, well, he's sitting crisscrossed in his chair like that. Yeah, but his he had a small platform at the bottom, and oh, that's cool. okay. And same with. You know, Kane and Oni, I mean, those guys were in Hidden Realm, but yeah, I mean, we had a lot of these things all kind of lined up, and um, <laughs> I really liked the Marshall character. That was like our Clint Eastwood kind of character. Uh, speaking of unused content, I just wanted to know, why did you guys give UB a voice in the Wendy's discs? <laughs> I need to come up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a bad idea. We it wasn't our idea to do so, but they. I think it was right around the cartoon, so they were trying to get some kind of connection between that. But 
Oh. <laughs> it's like that part is, you know, in Star Wars where they remind George Lucas of the TV special and you're just like, oh, God, that was so bad singing and dancing <laughs> droids. Yeah, that was kind of, this is our Star Wars TV moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, for other other things regarding uh, unused content, uh, Larry had found some CG scenes from the Hidden Realm and DC Funky trailer or whatever. Um, was that supposed to be an official video or was that just like concept stuff? I don't know. I'd have to look at it and see uh, what he found, but uh, we did have another line that initially planned for a speed racer um like you mentioned i think but just never happened when the when the whole series died the, everything just kind of shut down on that um do you know what like uh i'm not sure if i asked you this already but do you know what like what happened to those prototype figures like the marshall and the the goya like after the convention do you know where they went or like, where they might still be have them Oh, they were out there someplace. Yeah, I mean, I would get certain people have them. I, I don't think I ever had one, but, um, yeah, they're around. They're well, around. I just thought of another question since you said you own those. Did you ever own a dot? Yeah, sure. Oh. <laughs> we had at one point we had a box full of them, and we were like handing them to everybody at Comic Con. Just trying to get rid of them all because we didn't want to oh put them back. Well, you you only had like two thousand. It's not that much. <laughs> it was a lot. It was just <laughs> that show, though. It was the only place we handed them out. But uh, yeah, everybody had a dot. Do you not have a dot? I don't have a dot. I want one. Uh, no. So there's about only two people in the server that own dots. They're very very rare these days. No, oh, really? There are yeah. three or four people now. Because there's wrestling, oh, really? he still has his dot. There's Giovanni an and Shiny. Shiny has one in package. With the flower packaging around it? Yeah. And, uh, uh, <laughs> but he has two dots. So does Giovanni. Giovanni owns two dots. And Giovanni paid, I think he said, I don't remember how much he said, but he paid, he paid a lot for it. I think. Giovanni's yeah. got a huge collection. Does he have the biggest collection in the group? He has yes, the he has over dupes. like a thousand, I would say. He has the most dupes. He's missing two funkies, I believe. And oh, really? um, um, Shiny has all the funkies except for two also. I have all of the funkies except for Dot, the, U the two USBs, and um, some of the rarities, but I do have every funky, technically. Hmm. Like, on the 3.1 checklist. Yeah. Speak, speak of that, um, was there ever a uh, checklist that involved, like, a UB Funky's downloadable checklist that had the Mulch and the um, Ace and all those guys in it? Or did you guys stop after the Speed Racer Zone? Because I think that's as far as it goes on the one point. A 3.1 checklist. So the checklist, yeah. Yeah, I think that was the last one we did. Yeah. I mean, I have documents on the other ones, but I, I don't think we ever produced another checklist like that, uh, past that. Understandable. And um, just going back to these one last time, but the Dream State figures, there was like two Marshalls shown, like one in his normal clothing and one that was white. Was it supposed to be like some kind of variant or... I uh, know it was actually going to be a different character. Oh, um, really? Yeah. So it was going to be, you know, with every dark, there's a light, you know, and kind of it, he was going to be like the light version. So he was not as dark and mysterious and kind of like that. He was going to be much more of uplifting and kind of more of a just a downright outward hero where the other one's kind of more kind of borderline. Wow. Um, where are we? Um, um, so, um, for Angus Manor, we haven't talked much about him, but 
Was there any more plot to his storyline? I know he was the man who created the Funk Trunk, the one who could go in between portals and found all the ways for us to get inside of certain people's houses and stuff. But yeah. was there any other things planned for him besides like his elevator and his house? Um, well, when you say planned, I mean, that might be an overstatement, but uh, we definitely, I, de I know I definitely wanted him to have a full-time character in the game that we could sell also that would be an actual character. Um, but just didn't have time, ran out of time. You know, there's so many of these that are like that, you know, that you just, we had plans for and where we had them on the sidelines kind of on the on the bench ready to go and just you know you ran out of time you know when they shut it down it was like shut it down move it over pass everything over it's like what and um speaking of angus in his manner the last floor of it is unobtainable was there any plans to add that like or like add something special to this floor uh no no there was not it was just always going to be unobtainable. Uh. Oh, wow. We was on a cliffhanger. Okay. I see. Well, a cliffhanger that's never going to happen, technically. Exactly. Uh. <laughs> Keep them wanting more. <laughs> so, uh, I just realized, since we are in the unused context, uh, uh, unused content right now, um, on the side of certain hub packs, like I believe with my... Uh, daydream hub that I just got. There was like uh, alternate versions of characters on the side. Were those fan or were those early creations? On the artwork of the packaging? Like on the side, uh, it always had and many more to collect and it showed a few funkies and then on the bottom it said uh, keep an eye out for these coming soon and then it had um like, I believe it was all redesign or different designs of the Hidden Realm Funkies. Or oh, like, really? Like, there was an alternate version of Yang. Um, I think there was one of Singe. Bandit was on there. Um, White, was was White Sprocket on there? Or am I thinking? Uh, no, but that will be I got, I got, um, a question we're going to ask soon, so. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I think that uh, we were always trying to kind of I don't know, get people excited about new ones coming out. And so when we would do these, it was a good opportunity just to be able to showcase some of these ones because we would do these starter kits and they were exclusive. So we may not have launched a series before, you know, but we were always launching those hubs as exclusives, as different diversions, as whatever. So those were really easy to kind of pepper in there, little sneak peeks at things would come. But um, Clearly, obviously, some of those things did not actually end up be coming to fruition. And, um, UB Funkies ended up getting a bit of merchandise, such as shirts and USB drives. Were there any plans for other merchandise that never got made? Yeah, I mean, we had a lot of different things. You know, we did the speakers. That, those were pretty cool. A little green light around the edge of them and stuff. I have those. Did you know? Yeah. Did you know that they actually, whenever, like, Base hits on them when uh, sounds being outputted to them. The light around the thing will like uh, it'll blink. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm that's yeah. that's very cool. I really like that. I wish I could take any some kind of credit for it. Honestly, all I did was approve the design and approve the packaging. Um, it was a total out licensing, so companies would come to us and. Uh, and they would license the name of Funkies in order to put it on there and sell it and hope to sell some. Um, yeah, we did the USB sticks, and we did that, and we did the uh, t a few T-shirts, too. We had a whole line of clothes originally designed. Um, had, yeah, there's quite a bit of out-licensed stuff, backpacks, um, lunch boxes. I'm trying to think what else. No, there were T-shirts and lanyards also. Yep, lots of T-shirts. We had made some T-shirts, and handed them out in different times you saw in some of those pictures i was wearing bones one um but yeah they were uh very popular let's just say we ran out of those t-shirts a lot 
So I have one more quick question. So this isn't really pertaining to unused content per se, but what happened to Inflatable Deuce? I want him. <laughs> I want to put him in my house. <laughs> yes, we had him for a while. Yeah, I don't know where he ended up someplace. <laughs> we also had these big ones. I don't know if you can see, and there's in some pictures at Toy Fair where we had these ones that were like, I don't know, two and a half feet tall funkies that were solid. Um, yeah, there's one. Yeah, I remember there was uh, one of them was, let me think what was the one. Uh, one of them was right off the top of my head was uh, Tiki. I remember a Tiki one, and there was another one too. Uh, I want to say like Vroom or something. I believe I saw. I saw. I remember seeing Solid Vroom somewhere. I don't remember. Yeah, really... I think that was in your art show, wasn't it? There was a Solid yeah, had... Vroom figure there. We moved them around a lot, so yeah, it could have been. They were like waist high, I think, or something, or just under waist high. Oh, um, speaking of the um, art show, was were there ever plans to have like the winner of that have their funky be placed into um, into a game? No, there wasn't anything like that, but we. Uh... <laughs> It was just so cool because all we did was give these guys one white blank funky and they just went crazy with it. And so if you look at some of those designs, it's just a phenomenal what they ended up coming up with. Uh, you know, one guy did one on Steamboat Willie, you know, like the, the Mickey Mouse film. And I ended up bidding winning that one. Uh, but it was just blew my mind what they came up with. The octopus one was just crazy. And, I mean, just so many of them. They took them in so many different ways that we definitely wanted to do it again. Um, of course, those were all auctioned off for charity, and so then we, so we just kind of wanted to do something like that again. I think. Um, oh. okay. oh, sorry, mixer. You, you go ahead. So for um, for like the art show. I remember there was like um, a tentacle monster. How, how did you think of that one? <laughs> how did we think of it? Yeah. We just thought if we were walking along and something grabbed us, what would we want to have? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that one. That was a good one. <laughs> oh, also, um, since you were talking about how you guys had white base funkies, uh, in the Terrapenia, uh, the Great Terrapenia Library, I believe it's called, um, in the like book of funkies, there is a one for base funk. Like it was a yellow, a blue, and a red, I believe. Um, were there ever plans to have like they had eyes, they were like UB, but just one color. And um, were they ever planned for release or anything like that? No, I'm surprised those were in there actually. I, th I think it was just like an overall biography of monkeys hmm. or how they how they are or whatever yeah yeah um no there's no real plans for anything like that we like we enjoyed too much uh coming up with new designs for them. and then um, a little off topic but what is something i thought of now is you be like a tr like a funky tribe like every other funky or is he just like an individual kind of like mayor say so or jerry or someone like that he's more like a mayor say so jerry yeah exactly kind of a ward of the funkies area were there ever also uh since there were so many different hubs like there was the black hub the daydream hub etc was, was there ever plans to make it where if you connected one of those certain hubs it would change your in-game UB's look, like the default UB to like the Speed Racer UB or the uh, red pink hub. No, there wasn't anything like that. But I thought that there was when you plug in the hub that the UB in the game changed color to whatever your hub was, right? Uh, um, from what I've seen, it's all, I've used every single hub that I own, and they've all been the same. Always the same. It's always the same UB from my knowledge. So there was an idea at one point then to change that to match whatever hub you're plugging in. I thought we did that. 
Maybe it was in your last branch, because didn't you guys say you were working on like 5.1? Yeah. Maybe that's the way it was, but we didn't see it in 5.0, 5, 4.8, um, mm. 1.0, or 2. While we're on the topic, um, do you want to tell us a little bit about 5.1 and like what's supposed to be included in it? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not really sure, honestly. Just off the top of my head. Um, I'd have to look and see, but okay. um, yeah, I'd have to look and see. I think where originally it was more kind of, um, yeah, I think we we're just looking at different new ways to explore some of the existing stuff and then kind of maximize it. Um, was recycling in, uh, uh mulch, out- mulch was in 5.0. It was uh, the one with the backpack. Yeah, 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 right. Um, he was released. Yeah, because didn't we try to look? We had bomber and recycle. Tad and Rastro. Right. Three eyed alien. Well, I think he's three eyed. I don't know what he yeah. is, so I can't reference his uh, model. So, I mean, I think that, that was in Paradox City. That was really like kind of the finale that we were kind of working on when everything, you know, we had the different tools kind of optimized. We had Recycle, we had iFunk. iFunk? And, yeah. He was, a, he was going to be a musical one. So, uh, Ooh. I don't think yeah. that one ever got like put out there then because this is the first I think I've heard of it. Is it that one from the Funky Tools commercial? Well, I'd have to look and see, but I think, um, yeah, this it was him, there was Recycle, he was the last tool that we had, and he had mu- it was like a music thing where you could uh, do different, um what it was now i'm not to remember i'll have to check my notes and see but by that point we had holler gabby rewind rom and then we were launching bomber recycling my funk and then dc was originally supposed to be the four of them that's really where we were headed the next round that was kind of developed we were working with dc on that that was just turned into the biggest nightmare. Um, DC was really hard to work with. They made us like we couldn't, we couldn't switch them without them. I forget what it was. They were they put this big stipulation on it too, where they couldn't, they wouldn't let us switch them in game. They had to be separate characters, so their alter ego. Had to be a separate character. I think that was one of the things that they told us. It's so like, weird. Yeah. Uh, made, yeah, something like that. And they just, it really made things difficult for us from a development standpoint because it broke our model, basically, of how we do things in there. We wanted to have it. See, one of the big, I remember what it was. It was like if you have an Aquaman on there, and you take them off and put Batman on there on screen, that's going to switch over to that character, right? They didn't like that because that made it look like Aquaman was turned into Batman or whatever it was. And so we had to provide some kind of a transition, a different kind of transition. It was just, yeah, it was like pulling teeth. Was there any plans for that transition? Like, would you be just put on like a costume or something or? Yeah, I think that's what we're trying to work out is like how those would actually work out. So, okay, Superman's got to go into a booth, you know, telephone booth. And, you know, Batman's got to go someplace, either shoot up in the air and drop back down as somebody else or something like that, I think is what we were trying to come up with that they would see as being acceptable to them. And, um, was there any development done for the DC world at all, or was it just like all concept stuff? No, it was just all concepts. Well, no, we I shouldn't say that. We did 
development in terms of like yeah we had some initial gameplay kind of done out and we had some initial worlds built out i believe but it was really early stages early early stages stuff and uh and then of course we had some of the designs that we were working on so uh i have a quick question regarding the aquaman monkey that you did. would the aquaman monkey like be able to dive into the water off the monkey town or been able to go to comfy basin well that's a really good question that would have been in our second line of DC, actually. Uh, we were planning him, Mr. Frost, and somebody else. But, yeah, I mean, that was the idea, is that maybe we do start, you know, bringing these worlds together a little bit. But um, but if we did, I think that it would probably be, he would be in that world. I'm not sure that Funkies would be there as well. But I don't know. Yeah, we never got to that far, I guess. And, again, yeah. again, we like to keep those things kind of separate. We wanted Funkies just to be its own little world and be able to keep growing the Funkies world. And these guys may have been Funky-like characters, but they had to exist in a different land. And um, I just have two more questions about the DC world, but that's okay. Like, for, was it going to be like a singular world, like Speed Racer, or was it going to branch out into like multiple worlds, like Batman, Superman, Aquaman? Yeah, I think there were four worlds. I think there were four different worlds, one for each character. So we had like a Gotham, a, a Metropolis, and yeah, for the Joker, it was like an arcade or like some kind of beat down thing. And then there were like a carnival. And who was the last one? What am I forgetting? Wonder Woman? Green Lantern. Green Lantern. No. Yeah, but it's not him. He was it was Flash. Oh, Flash. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> so he was in the was originally in the four and he would have had his place and whatever. And um how did the idea for a DC crossover come in? Was that meant like was that Mattel also? Yeah, I mean obviously you know it was something that we uh, saw the potential of right away um, just because I mean it just lended itself so much so easily to it you know so uh, it was something that we wanted right away um, we were pushing but we got Speed Racer first so honestly I wish that we'd gotten <laughs> the DC stuff before we got the other but again we ran into so many problems from uh, getting trying to get approvals from DC and stuff on it it was really not a pleasant experience. So, and was there any other licensing opportunities that were like in the works, for Funkies? Like any people that were interested, or any ideas you guys might have had? Yeah, I mean, I think you saw that image that I posted that we had like SpongeBob on it. Like we had talked about doing a SpongeBob world, um, SpongeBob Funkies, and there was another one too that I can't think Zim. of. There was a Zim Funky. Oh, uh, there was a Invader Zim Funky. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. So things like that we were just looking at and just always trying to keep our eyes open to something that made sense. But um, more or less, it was a support. So we were supporting licenses within Mattel while really trying to push the boundaries with the actual game and the characters that we had. Uh, Mixer, do you want to ask about the Funky Tools stuff? Oh, yeah. So, first of all, I got to know, is that Funky like a speaker, or is it a um, fan, or is it like a jet fan hybrid? Which one? The, uh, the one that was featured in the uh, Funky Tools commercial, like the actual tool Funky. Uh, do you want me to pull up like, a picture of it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I definitely have it somewhere. Let me just try refresh to pull it my up. memory. Yeah, it was in the commercial for like a little bit. I'll see if I can look also, so we can do this two times faster. Yeah, I found one photo. I'm just gonna post it in the group chat real quick. Do it. It looked. It looked. Uh, oh, 
Hey, I found the uh, one about the speed racer. The old speed. Let me let me send you that one also, so you. Get... Uh, it's like that fan guy in the middle, like the white one. Oh yeah, uh huh. That's him. Is it... So what Where's is that? he? That's iFunk. Oh. It's iFunk. Okay, so I'm guessing then he's a speaker. Yeah, he was. Uh, it was all about music, as I recall. I can't really think of exactly how it worked, but it was something about music that we had that was tied in. Was that, um, that, uh, yeah. was that related to like the uh, playlist that we saw? As I remember, in one thing there was a thing about the playlist, like there were going to be playlists for each individual. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Where you can take different songs and create different playlists with them and modulate the, you can play with the actual music and kind of where it could be actually user generated content. Oh, and here are those speed racer functions I was talking about. See how, like, uh, X has that really weird variant, and um, yep. the one that's next to speed is Cannonball Taylor, I believe. And he looks so much different than how he is now. Yeah. Yeah. So this was a very early kind of pitch as to how they might look. Um, yeah. Just very early art. Good, but very early. Yeah. I forgot about that. Because I, I honestly would still love to see that speed racing model because it's, it's very like early speed. Yeah, yeah. It definitely had a lot of cool things there, for sure. Also, just what are your, Do you have a list of all the biographies? Uh, um, there we... is one in uh, the game itself, but um, we're still putting them on the wiki. Um, wiki so. Is that image like official that I just posted, or is that like a fan-made? Because I've, I've always been curious about that. Of whether that was official or fan made, yeah. it was it's just like, something we created real quick. That board back behind there, yeah, and also like the funkies, like it has like Chim Chim, like a very like early design Racer yeah. X. That was at a show at Toy Fair when we were talking about doing them. We hadn't done them yet, though. Uh, are oh. those funkies still around, or <laughs> did you guys throw them away as soon as you were done with them? No, I don't know if we threw them away, but I don't know who ended up with them or where they ended up. Because I would love that Racer X. Uh, <laughs> whoever has that Racer X, uh, shoot me a DM on Discord. I'll totally buy it from you. There you go. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking Good. of prototypes, on the Mattel support site, under the very rare sprocket, there's a picture of a white sprocket figure instead of a black one. Uh, do you know the story behind that and why it was eventually changed to black? There's a white sprocket. Yeah, I have a picture of it. I can pull it up. Like yeah. this is this has been something that's drive that's been driving the community crazy for a while because it's still on the Mattel support site. If you go there, like now, that photo. It is. Yeah. <laughs> so white sprocket. Ah. <laughs> Uh -huh. So, um, I think we've touched enough on like the lost content. So, I want I want to know. Um, I I know I know you went on the mini rant to me on Facebook and on Discord about Mattel, but um, so. I know you said um, it. You think it uh, Funkies was just cut for no reason. So no, what were your I full feelings that. about it? I didn't say it was cut for no reason. I just said that their their reason was not not a good one. So that basically essentially means no reason. <laughs> give or take. Give or take. So at the time, um, so this would have been twenty ten, I think. Twenty nine, twenty. Yeah, somewhere around in there. So they um, basically what happened was you got to remember this is right around when the financial crisis hit, and so everything was you know jobs were companies were shutting down and stuff, 
And they decided to take the brands that we had done in, in Funkies and move them back over to LA. We were working on Dallas and they were going to do them all in house and shut They ended up shutting down Radica and basically uh, some of the designers came back over there with them, but everybody else was cut loose and they fired us all and closed the doors on it and moved all the brands. I, as one of my last things I had to do at the, at, Radica was basically send over all this stuff to the new brand manager who had never done anything with this before in his life. Oh. And, you know, we had already had the next series set up and, and ready to, you know, go on it. But what ended up happening was they didn't, they just took a, by that point it had gone down. It hadn't, it hadn't been a thirty million dollar brand anymore. It was a more like a fifteen million dollar brand, rough, right? Uh, but a fifteen million dollar brand because they had basically cut our legs off on a lot of different things. They had, you know, cut our buy down. They would taken our commercial, our advertising, to where we could only run ten second commercials and fifteen second commercials instead of the traditional thirty second, and our our spend on it was very small as well. So we weren't getting as many commercials out there. And so there's just a, it was a concerted effort just to kind of shut it down and put that money and that effort towards something else. So that's what happened. And uh, they just, they shut it down and they basically flushed that whole line down the toilet. They never did another thing with it. They didn't try to, they sold off what they had in the stores and it was done. So, oh. Obviously, me and a couple other people, but you know, for, speaking for myself, I was really hurt by the way they did all this stuff, and so I was very upset. Clearly, some of that's now coming back to the surface, but uh, <laughs> but it just it seemed like such a waste, and I think that's what really get. And it was really hard for me to get over it, honestly, and uh, really was. And uh, so I think at one point I was just I was trying to fight the good fight and I was holding on some of it, but I just ended up for my own mental health and well being. I think I just had to get rid of it and just kind of put it in the rear view mirror. Cause I knew it would never come back around or so I thought. And so, uh, and so I just really kind of put it in a box and put it away and never thought of it again. And until you contacted me and I was just like, wow, Gosh, what? I had no idea there was people involved. Wow. Yeah. I know, um, I think when you joined, we had around 150-ish money. How, how does it make you feel that we're now at um, almost 200? Well, I figure that probably 50 of those are probably people from Mattel tuning in to see what I say about them. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the other five are probably ex Radica people seeing what I say about them. <laughs> Hey, I mean, if you want to get some Radica people in, I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the more the merrier. We, we, got, we got the funky team role for a reason. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would love to take some of the credit, but I think this is all you guys, you know, and it's your, uh, to your efforts that this is actually kind of coming about and, and really become you know, come back around and where people are enjoying it again. So my hat's off to you guys. Oh, uh, quick question. Uh, I do remember you saying in um, question for devs chat, um, you, you know, the two people who ran arc one, like the two main people who would know about it. Did you ever di do anything with arc one? Did you have any direct interaction with it at all? You're talking about Arcadium, right? Uh, yeah, it was Arcadium yeah. One. That was the like server Remember. software that ran uh, Funky. Uh huh. Was I? Did I have anything to do with Arc One? Like, did you uh, ever learn how to use it or anything like? That? No. No. And no, it wasn't really my. Like, I wasn't a software engineer. I didn't. I wasn't in the software at the time, and just wasn't my thing. I managed the brand and kind of was working with the design group and stuff. And um, 
when Paradox Green released, for some reason only the very rare figures were put out in stores. Do you know why that is? I do. Because normally we would launch the the regular, the rare, and the very rare. And in this case, they were shutting things down. And so we decided to only put out the very rare just to give the fans like a very the very rare ones out there. Which is ironic now looking back on it that the just the regular line and the rare were probably now more in demand as prototypes because <laughs> not the rare. But uh, we're just trying to give them something that we thought was cool. For um one second, my brain's starting to die now. Um <laughs> I remember when I originally contacted you, I had told you about the wiki. You said you took a little bit of a look at it. Uh, how does it, uh, how do you feel that there's like a whole wiki dedicated just to like an entire site? Basically? Blows me away. Blows me away. I mean, you know, when I started, when I, you know, helped start this thing, it's, there was very little social media presence. I started hitting up all the social media stuff and, you know, trying to get them listed on Wikipedia and just trying to get things, get some kind of momentum going on it to build it so that it would be a brand to last. And, and you know, so to see that you have an entire wiki devoted to it is just, it's amazing. It's amazing to see what you've done with it. And honestly, you've had to piece together most of it. It hasn't been like just handed to you on a silver platter. Here's everything. It's been very much, uh, you know, just kind of, uh, made you have to go out and find out this information, and you know, hopefully, if I can clear up some of it, I can. Uh, I mean, we've we've like learned more from you than like than all we knew like beforehand. So it's been very helpful, <laughs> the wiki and just the community in general. So I don't know when I hear you guys talk about some of the stuff, I'm like, what? What are we? <laughs> we did that? It's like crazy. You guys deep dive on some of it. I just, unfortunately, I just haven't seen a lot of that stuff in a long time been 10 years almost oh um think of that um damn it i just had a question i forgot it <laughs> the 10 year anniversary oh wait no oh yeah um so remember how we had talked about um possibly doing like either the 15th or 20th anniversary of us doing the live stream with you? Are you hyped for that? Will you try out oh. Funkies after so long? I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, I really can't. I actually am excited about it. <laughs> See how this thing looks and feels and take it out for a test drive. <laughs> oh, so, um, ever since, um, I actually contacted you and you got associated with Discord. How many Discord servers have you actually joined? Like uh, just two, I think. Just on the Dungeons and Funkies <laughs> and this one. <laughs> Were there more that I'm not aware of? <laughs> I mean, th there are some other Funkies Discords. Uh, I believe um, there are. Two fan projects. There's the one that I'm spearheading with um, Why Not and a few others. And then cool. there's um, another one, but I think they've went out of production for a bit. Personal reason. Yeah. But I, yeah. I'll definitely send you those. Sure. Sure. Happy to kind of weigh in. Oh. No, it's really been fun seeing different people and their different personalities and, and getting their personality and then putting it into a funky almost. It's like their personality comes out within the funkies that they're creating and stuff. I think that's really the, the best part of this whole thing. I just thought I, I just thought of another question. That, but um, if you were a funky, which funky do you think you would be? <laughs> Founder funky, obviously. <laughs> You'd be so <laughs> well. Yeah, Funkwell, <laughs> for sure. Big platforms. Disco ball head. No. Yeah. Exactly. 
Yeah, no, I mean, I'd just be me. I'd be the funky. The funkiest of funkies. <laughs> everyone in the chat, everyone in the Discord is still like, Victor, do the interview. I'm like, I'm in the interview right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we said it was going to be an hour, and so two hours later, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining. I don't care. I've got time, so. Oh, I think that uh, I'm glad everybody's getting excited. Hopefully there's something in here that they enjoy and that uh, was able to answer some of their questions at least. Some of them kind of threw me. <laughs> some of the more technical ones that librarian Larry here threw out. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry about that. But... <laughs> um, I mean, well, how about that? Oh, God, everyone's saying fix it <laughs> <laughs> what? Look, look in the Funky's general on Discord. Just everyone's saying, Mixer, do the interview. Oh, <laughs> Jeff, you should type it in just. <laughs> uh, oh, um, oh my god, you got everybody in. Up. Oh, oh. What happened? Oh, he joined oh, Jen! He joined Jen, uh. Should we just go in there? <laughs> um, okay, well. <laughs>